This is Ask an Expat with Marcus and Matt from An Expat's Russia, where we answer your questions about what it's like to live, work, and travel in Russia. Today we're going to answer the question, what was the hardest thing for us when we were learning Russian? Marcus, what was the hardest part about learning Russian for you? I know there's lots of things, but what specifically tripped you up the most in the beginning? Yeah, I think uh, I was thinking about this um, and there are different things, but it, it came down to one for me, which was the um, concept of cases, which is sure. um, you use a different ending for nouns, adjectives, even names um, to <laughs> like it, yeah. it signifies something else. So for example, in English, you have order and order is very important. If you, if you don't use order, then the sentence doesn't make sense, right? So you can say, I want pizza exactly. in English. I want pizza. You can't say, I pizza want or pizza I want because you, you can say that and maybe people will understand, but they're like, what's going on? Um, you know, there's ambiguity. But Russian, you can add an ending to um, the word and it will and it will change that word to a subject or exactly. object and it will keep its you know object for example if you say i want pizza ya хочу pizzu you can use that order or you can say because pizza changes to pizza to pizzu cuz i want mm -hmm. you could put pizzu in any in, in any any order in that sentence and it doesn't change um, because of the the case the ending so right for english speakers it, um, it's hard not to it's hard to understand because you think that changing the ending you hear that you hear something similar but it has a different ending so you're like it's a different word so right. you can say like something like umbrella is zont but when it's in a different case in Russian you have six cases uh, German has four um, English has none now uh, they have remnants of cases like you know you me but again order is, is the most important so in Russian you can say umbrella zont but if you're saying uh, you know I'm walking with an umbrella with an umbrella would be s the pre, the uh, preposition with and then zantom so right. when you hear zantom versus zont you're like the, the accent changes you think it's a different word and it was just really confusing when I was first learning Russian thinking, I don't know the word santom. And they're like, zont? You don't know that? I'm like, oh, umbrella, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so getting your head around this, at least my, from my perspective, that was a tough thing to, to understand like, okay, these words can, they can change meaning and with yeah. names too. Like, uh, Mar Marcus, for example, can be Marcusa, Marcusa, Marcusu. Yeah. And, and I was like, I was like, why would you say, you know, why can't you just say the, the preposition? I'm with Marcus. Yes, Marcusom, they would say. And so yeah. for English speakers, speakers, you just have to realize and step back and look at the whole context and say, okay, this case end can change, you know, the ending can ch change based on the case and the case has different yeah. roles that it plays in, in conveying meaning. So it can be tough for for you know, beginners. Um, Absolutely. What, what was your, what was the hardest thing for you? For me, I mean, I also struggled with the cases in the beginning, but I kind of found my own way around them by trying to remember to associate the preposition with the ending of the word. So I tried to remember them as one rather than thinking, okay, I have the, the word s with, and now I need the um, instrumental case. Mm -hmm. I just tried to remember that all is one thing like you can't just have a preposition you have to have a preposition with the case ending yes that helped me what I struggled with more was the prefixes that go in the front of verbs so for example you have the verb to talk говорить but you can also then add prefixes like уговорить заговорить отговорить and this then becomes quite difficult to understand for most learners of Russian it's quite similar to phrasal verbs um, in English but it's still in some cases, you add the prefix and it just slightly changes the word. So, говорить is a 
pretty standard example. Ugavarit is to convince someone. Watgavarit is to talk someone out of something. So these are relatively similar meetings, right? But you can have ukazait um, from the stem kazait, which is to specify, or you can have zakazait, which is to order. And so it's there's almost no logic to to the prefixes. Um, so in the beginning, you're obviously just learning these verbs, and you don't even know. Uh, how, how this system works and that's how you sort of get around it in the beginning but once you have to start learning these prefixes it can be relatively difficult um, now it's not so hard you kind of learn some um, rules where you can comfortably predict probably 70 percent of the meanings of the words mm -hmm. but that was what tripped me up yeah i would say that you know in general, Russian is very systematic, so you can learn the rules, and then right. you know there are a few exceptions. But in the beginning, um, you know cases were hard for me to kind of uh, start using, and especially when somebody was saying something. For for right. you, Matt, it was uh, these prefixes to words that change the meaning slightly and don't change the meaning. Um, if you uh, have any experience with learning Russian, comment below. Uh, what was what were the mo most difficult parts of learning Russian for you? Was it cases? Was it uh, um, you know prefixes, suffixes, or maybe it was something like um, uh, verbs of motion? That's what I hear a lot. Yeah, very so common. Very let common us know issues. in the comments below. We'd be interested in uh, finding out. This was Ask an Expat with Marcus and Matt from an Expat's Russia. We hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have a question about Russia, let us know in the comments. We'll answer it in another video.